Here we are with part two on the topic of orchids and setback. Let me point you to the bottom of the video because in order to keep this as concise as possible, I will be adding ticker features. If there's anything else I want to bring to your attention that I'm not going to be including in the commentary because commentary also extends the length of the video. So as we go through the examples, show and tell and Q and A, I will be comprehensive. I won't be cutting corners, but I'm really going to focus on the show and tell and Q and A. Anything I may miss, that ticker will be going as and when needed. So without further ado, let's get to it. One disclaimer I have to bring out there is that the reasons for setback are very comprehensive. So my examples are not the one, two, three, X, Y, Z reasons that would apply to a setback diagnosis as a whole for your orchid. But what I would like you to take away from this show and tell is that while setback is a singular outcome, there are many different factors that can set an orchid back. It doesn't always have to be for a single reason. So as I go through my examples, you may pick up repeated reasons within a combination of other reasons. Hopefully those seeing my examples and hearing the reasons will help you with your diagnosis should you find yourself thinking that you have a setback orchid. And because I'm starting with Dendrobium aurantiflammeum, which was a gift from Michael McCarthy, I'm going to insert Michael McCarthy's comment right here, right now, because it's comments like these that are valuable. Not because my channel is about an echo chamber, but his conditions and climate are completely different to mine. And yet, Michael has the same experience when it comes to setback, including, I quote, I can't make heads or tails of it, which can also happen. Sometimes it is not clear cut as to why an orchid is set back, but recognizing that it is gives us the advantage to how we care for it until it snaps out of it. So here is my diagnosis for my Dendrobium aurantiflammeum, which is yonder in the distance of the viewfinder because, <laughs> yeah, she's got very, very long canes. She's got very bare canes. And this is because of a pest infestation in 2022. It would appear that spider mites have found my patio and with that, they found my Dendrobium aurantiflammeum. I have never had experience with spider mites before, so I caught this too late. This orchid is the one I referenced in part one, where I said our orchids may look dead, but we need to look for signs of life in order to know that we don't open the trash lid too soon. So I'm going to bring her in a little bit closer because this is where I see signs of life. And this is where I was watching her closely and understood this orchid is majorly set back. My aurantiflammeum came to me in great health. However, when she arrived, she also had the pseudobulbs a little bit shriveled and a little bit wrinkled. No problem with that. Every orchid needs some time to recover, but she was in great health. So this is not about shipping stress, but I do know that dendrobiums are tough and her setup is lava rock and semi-hydro because I have a very, very dry climate. This orchid is also far too large for me to mount. So I'm just giving you a background as to where I'm coming from here. And then she grew two new growths. And the first new growth after having been shipped to me was beautiful. I was very happy because the back one, you can see where that was. Then she grew another one. I'm like, whoa, we are in business. And then enter spider mites. And this is how she's been since last year, it's been 12 months. I have been caring for her as if she were a seedling. And lo and behold, this year, after a long time of absolutely nothing, I've got two new growths coming. Now, these two new growths are not going to be anything to write home about because obviously I am babying some very old roots. While they are still functioning, they are very old. I'm not taking them out with any heavy fertilizer. So if I don't repeat every single bit of care item that I'm going to do with my examples, just to save on time, my care for all the examples you see today is according to seedling care. What I do a lot though is flush. So we are back in business. She has snapped out of setback. 
I know now that she is a spider mite magnet. If I get spider mites again, dendrobiums also absolutely hate anything industrial when it comes to a pesticide. They object, they will dump their leaves, and it would appear that that also happened with my Orontiflamium because after I saw spider mites, I applied garlic alcohol, but I wanted to alternate the treatment between garlic alcohol and a soapy wash. Anyway, now that she doesn't have leaves, I can just go with garlic alcohol to make sure that nothing recovers and comes alive again on the cane. So, she has come out of setback. My fertilizing is very conservative. 100 parts per million of calcium magnesium as well as 100 parts per million in separate applications of my balanced fertilizer and then of course seaweed to help push her along with the hormones. At least I can report there is signs of life. I was extremely concerned about this orchid for the longest time. She being a gift. I have to state that because some orchids I have in setback, yeah, whatever, whenever you're ready, no rush. But in this case, I was a little bit concerned. Cute little tulumnias are a bane in my existence as much as I love them, but in my climate, they are very prone to scale. So in this case, this orchid is set back, and you can see that because of how the leaves are closed. These growths, while being old, they have not desiccated, they have not turned brown, they should still be absolutely fine. The leaves on the older fans should look like the leaves on the newer fans, but they don't. This is because of my application with garlic alcohol that had to happen repeatedly. While I would say every three days, every week would have been sufficient based on the infestation of scale that this orchid had, I went a little bit overboard and I've been doing it every day since I noticed the scale. Now the orchid might now be scale free. Well, let me just say the orchid is now scale free. However, the setback is evident because the cell structure was destroyed by me being too heavy-handed, too eager to make sure that everything was dead, also risking my orchid with going overboard on the garlic alcohol. I think what we've got going on here are some dead bodies still, so you see there's always a reason to be on the lookout. Now, her setback is somewhat, let's say, half and half, but I am not convinced about the survival rate of this orchid unless she grows new roots. So here are her new fans, but they have not progressed for the past four months. This is how she was when she came out of the winter. This is how she is even now and still no new roots. So here we have a classic case. Once again, very reduced fertilizer. But what I do with her is mist her a lot because of the dry air. I do not want any of the transpiration through the leaves to exacerbate the dehydrated leaves that she still has. Hopefully, she will be growing some new roots very, very soon. If not, then this orchid may not make it. Her setback may move into the next phase, as in leaving the collection, because my winters are too cold for tulumnias if they are not strong when we head into the winter. So she won't make the four months of November through March if she doesn't grow new roots and we can't get some more energy into the new fans that she has grown. This is my gorgeous little Catliantha, little fairy. She has taught me a lot about semi-hydroponics and roots and cold and evaporative cooling. And I have set this orchid back year after year after year. And even that is an oxymoron because once an orchid is set back, you can't set it back any further unless you decimate it to the point of no return. Anyway, my Catliantha is still alive, but the setback is evident in the fact that she grew a beautiful new growth, and then bit by bit, the growth started to get smaller and smaller. Now, she's growing another new growth, which is exactly what I'm waiting for, because this setback is a result of bad culture. Catlianthus, to my understanding, at least in my climate, do not appreciate Lekka and self-watering. And I say that in my climate, because once again, my winters are too cold for these warm to hot growers. Being a bifoliate, they are prone to dumping their roots, and they would prefer to stay a tad drier, if not completely dry, and then they could ride out the cold temperatures, and that is not the case in a setup of Lekka and self-watering. My media never dries out. 
So when the temperatures drop in winter, well, so does the temperature in the pot. And it's a little bit too frigid for them. I fully understand. It gets frigid for me too. So no hard feelings, just learning and going to be correcting this. I did not correct this in previous years because I've been experimenting with LECA sizes and saying this can be done and it's time to just change the size of the LECA, etc. Meanwhile, I have also learned from another orchid, my Cattleyanthus agarique wax, that it is time to stop experimenting with LECA, get her into lava rock, save the orchid, and eventually we can revisit LECA and self-watering when it comes to Cattleyanthus in my climate. So while this orchid is set back, she doesn't look too shabby, but oh my goodness, we could do better than that. And because of her new growth, now growing new roots, Stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We are going to be doing a rescue setup change for this orchid so that eventually she will come back onto her own, grow a beautiful new growth, which won't be this one. This one's gonna be a little small, hopefully like the predecessor, if we get that size, that'll be great. But at least it's gonna get a new root system in media that it can handle throughout my winters. And then, then, because she is a vigorous hybrid, otherwise she would be dead by now, possibly in the winter of 2025, she's going to bloom those beautiful yellow cluster blooms with that little splash of red that are highly fragrant. So the setback here is the culture in an inadequate climate. If I were in my climate using heat mats, using all my supplemental lighting, we wouldn't be talking about this orchid being in setback. We would be needing to bump her up several pot sizes. But anyway, you can tell how setback can take years and years because you're trying to also correct the problem until you understand it's the culture and nothing else. And then we go in and correct the problem. So. While I get the next orchid, seeing as we were talking about new growths, Sandy's question is something I touched upon in part one. And there are many questions I directed back at her in my answer. These are the questions you can ask yourself if you have a similar thing happening with an orchid's new growth, not progressing as would be expected. Now, in my case, I could diagnose the setup, but in my reply, all the questions I am asking her could be your own personal checklist if if you have a situation where the new growth isn't progressing as it should and if you can answer those questions for yourself in such a way where it makes sense with part one of this video which is linked in the description then you have your answer as to why that new growth is not progressing as expected the next orchid here is my pseudo epidendrum and yes this pot looks nasty that is because this orchid has never been repotted since she arrived in my collection. So what have we got here? First of all, we have some salt buildup because this leka was never leached. That means that if the orchid was trying to grow new roots, the climate of the pot was completely wrong. Secondly, this orchid came from an order that had horrendous quality orchids sent to me. And many of those orchids <laughs> didn't last six weeks in my collection. But I have to then also give credit to the Epidendrum genus because it seems like they're not that easy to take out. This orchid has been in my collection since 2018. This is what I have to show for that. And I have to show you that she also had thrips in 2022. Yeah, 2022 was a year of many firsts. So she had a pest infestation, but this is her best growth ever since she arrived. That one has been growing consistently since it popped out its little head in 2022, just as the 2023 growth is doing now. So what we've got going on here is a very weak, low quality orchid that arrived in our collection. This orchid was repotted within a week or two of arrival didn't allow it to even acclimate. She came in September. I was getting my heat mats out, preparing for the winter. I immediately addressed the orchid, didn't allow her to acclimate. So we had a weak orchid. I didn't allow her to acclimate. I didn't leach my leka, And for that reason, all that salt buildup on the surface. The orchid already arrived in my collection set back. But if you want to know the difference between setback and stalling, well, stalling is when absolutely nothing happens and you really do believe you have a dead orchid. Now, 
The reason I didn't toss this orchid is because she wasn't in the way. I was so busy with other things that this orchid wasn't bothering me and all I did was flush her very, very often. And I quite honestly didn't expect anything to come of her until one day she started a new growth and I went, oh, hey, now she's alive. So here we have another classic example of an orchid that <laughs> looked to be dead for many years, started a new growth, and that is when I started to care for her as if she were a seedling didn't repot her. I don't want to add more stress to her. Whatever roots would grow were being flushed so regularly that she got more flushing than she got any kind of fertilizer. So her first new growth with me was a little bit patetico, but we are getting there. Unfortunately, the thrips last year didn't help one bit, but it doesn't seem to have thrown her off her stride because we are back with a new growth. Now, this orchid is going to be repotted at some point in time when I see new roots coming. First of all, I want to get her more into the center of the pot. And secondly, <laughs> the pot is kind of broken and we can do something about that. But you can see how long it's taken this orchid to come out of setback. I can guarantee you if this orchid had arrived in my collection healthy and well, even me repotting her without letting her acclimate, she would have been able to be a much better performer than she is now, meaning she probably would have bloomed for me by now. But compounding one problem, adding to that with another, as I was doing, well, five years later, here we are. So you can see the diagnosis, how an orchid gets into setback can be because of a layer of many, many different reasons. And if we can eliminate those layers, when we think of, I don't want to set this orchid back before we do anything with an orchid, the chances of us avoiding setback are much, much higher. Okay, here's one where I really want you to, well, pay attention to the leaves, but don't pay attention to the leaves because the leaves are not the reason for her setback. So let me just get you in position. And while I do that, let me put up Nisa Dancer's question. Because Nisa Dancer had a great question, which, you know, when we change our homes, make things better, her new windows are now triple pane. Will they cause sunburn? And that's why I'm showing you some leaves that don't have sunburn on them, but every orchid that I had that was sunburnt in the past, the leaves dropped. I can't show them to you anymore. <laughs> so this is not sunburn. This is cold damage. But anyway, so yes, orchids by the window. Be super careful. Be vigilant what's going on, no matter the quality of the construction, no matter the quality of, of the window. You see, the quality of the glass installation may help with reducing noise pollution within the home, as well as insulation. But if there is no airflow around the leaves of the orchid, or the leaves touch the glass pane, which could be warm to the touch, or the glass does not have a filter incorporated into it to diffuse the light, then other measures need to be taken to avoid burning the leaves. Either increase the airflow, move the orchid back away from where the sun rays came in. Also, depending on what time of year, summer sun is more intense than winter sun, morning and late afternoon sun is less harsh than midday sun, or a sheer curtain could be needed to break the intensity of the sun rays. All these are measures that we can take to break up the intensity that direct sun brings with it. So. Don't rely on an installation of high quality and think that it's going to be okay. Consistent monitoring is still important, touching the leaves, checking the light levels, and knowing what time of year and what time of day you're dealing with. So what is going on and why is my Catlichia Gold Coast in setback mode? First of all, too cold. During the winters, this orchid is a warm grower. She doesn't like hot sun. So when I say warm, it doesn't equate to putting her into the blistering sun. She's a bit of a fussy one in that sense. She wants a lot of bright light. She wants a lot of heat, but my goodness, do not put her into the sun. However, during the winter, it gets too cold and her structures start to fail. The cell structures in the leaves, it becomes pitted. It's a shame. It's a visual disturbance, but the orchid otherwise can grow really well. As you can see, for years and years, I've been having some really good growths back to back, and we repotted her last year. So there's another key. We repotted her. Even though she had new roots growing, we repotted her. She didn't appreciate that too much. So this orchid throws out a stress growth during the winter because of the repot. That was new. Never seen her do that before. 
But seeing as the conditions weren't ideal, I wasn't expecting much, but you know what? Every new growth, be it small or big, is going to produce roots, so we are winning either way. Her growth following that came out late winter, early spring, and I wasn't anticipating anything much because my temperatures for this orchid don't warm up ideally until the end of April, possibly into mid-May, when even the night temperatures are nice. So just because her day temperatures are nice and warm, if her night temperatures are still too cool, in my setup again of Lekka and self-watering, being a bifoliate, she's going to object. So not much expectation here, but again, another growth with new roots. But you see, the repot of 2022 had her set back even though I had new roots growing. She didn't appreciate that. And then on top of that, during the winter, she was bombarded by a cockatoo who thought that the delicious pseudobulbs would be something that he needed to get his beak around, which is very annoying because it would appear that this orchid absolutely hated that treatment. The result also is the new growth stalled, not because of the conditions, but because of the attack. So this orchid has a little bit of a finicky attribute of, hey, just give me what I want, otherwise I'm going to show you I'm not happy. But the growth stalling is an indicator of damage to the pseudobulbs, something interfered with its normal rhythm, not cultural, but actual attack. And if this had been a pest infestation, this growth would have responded the same way. However, it is a vigorous hybrid, thank goodness. We're getting a second chance. And this new growth, although be it a little bit late in the season, Still, the fact it's growing in new growth means my setback period was extremely brief. Okay, so in my part one, I mentioned about setback in ideal conditions can take three years. That would be ideal. In this case, you can see the setback because of all the negative influences was approximately four months. Thank goodness for hybrids. If this was a species orchid like Alalia perinii, we probably wouldn't be talking about her anymore. She would have just moved on and been a beautiful memory. And thank you, Siliano, for also breaking what was an excellent pot. Oh, I can tell you, though, the pseudobulbs smelled delicious. Oh, when they were cut, yes, I treated them with cinnamon, but mm, the fragrance that came out of them, so fresh and clean, it was wonderful. Even though it was not wonderful, but you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. This is my Rincolelia Catlia Sunya Green. I call them my Easter Island pseudobulbs. This is all cold, including setup. And even though my first winter with this orchid, where I couldn't provide for her ideal conditions, she then tried to bloom for us. I still got bud blast, but that was not because of my conditions. That's just because of certain other factors. I have a video about that. Anyway, the second winter, I thought we were going to be okay with this orchid because, hey, she survived the first winter, right? Wrong. Clearly. Because, as mentioned in part one, we can have an orchid in setback and we can't actually see that it is in setback because visually everything is looking absolutely fabulous. And throughout the summer of 2022, everything was looking absolutely fabulous. We even got buds. Never mind the blast. <laughs> Still, the setback really kicked in then the next winter because by that time, she wasn't strong enough to recover. Compounded by the fact that Lekka and self-watering, evaporative cooling, all that also added to the fact that this orchid was just not going to make it through another winter of bad conditions, even though she had all summer to recover. Their metabolism is so slow, they give us hardly any grace if we make a mistake. And then if you don't have the ideal climate 24-7, 365 days a year, this is what can happen. Now, she does look horrifying, and you would think, yeah, no, this orchid is a goner. But you know what? Seeing as I'm in the nicest season that I could possibly imagine when it comes to orchid growing, she's not in the way. My patio is big enough, and I thought I can see viable roots at the front. So while everything in the back here is probably dead, uh, I just thought, let's see what she does. And there was an eye that didn't look too shabby after all. And uh, look, look at this, okay? Now, does that mean my orchid is saved? Absolutely not. In my conditions, the same principle applies. 
the next winter is coming. So what are the odds that she is going to have a problem again? I have no intention of intervening, as I mentioned in part one. An orchid in a very stressed setback state, the last thing you want to do is add another layer of stress and possibly compound the problem and cause collapse. While this orchid right now would be taking up space in my indoor shelf that I could desperately need for other orchids to keep them a little bit nicely shuffled close to light, yeah, I'm not interfering with this orchid. She's gonna stay as she is. She's got space. If she grows new roots, they can go into that pot. Because there's another thing about evaporative cooling, the bigger the pot, the lesser the effect. Now, that only applies if the roots are more to the middle, which is not what's going to happen with these roots. Chances are the roots of this new growth are gonna be out on the outside perimeter. But you see, a setback orchid bouncing back, and then it would be up to me to provide ideal conditions for the next 12 months. Well, that's not gonna happen. It's still interesting to observe though, that despite no leaves, there's nothing there really that she can photosynthesize with. Pseudobulbs are gone. Others may follow suit very, very soon, but we'll keep watching her just to see if she proves us wrong. And if you're still with me, thank you so, so much. Once again, can I remind you, give this video a thumbs up. That would be awesome and subscribe to the channel because following the progress of setback orchids or the possible decline of setback orchids is a lesson in and of itself. Now, these are two dendrobiums mounted very clearly, very obviously, but if you have not seen my previous videos, these orchids were literally sawn off another mount. Yes, they lived together with another orchid. There was three of them on a single mount. And this year in 2023, I took the saw to that big mount and I separated the orchids. And boy, oh boy, when we talk about destroying a root system, while I didn't rip the orchids off, I still have maybe 30%, 40 if I'm lucky, of the old root system attached. I lost a huge chunk of the root system, the support system for these dendro orchids which will cause them to go into setback now if they don't that would be a miracle I'm jumping a little bit ahead with my diagnosis here but I know these orchids I have watched them since they arrived in my collection in 2018 and this would be Dendrobium seraula. Usually, this time of year, she is full, full of blooms. While she did bloom for us earlier and started to bring out buds after buds after buds, because this orchid will bloom for four months straight during the hottest time of year, and she was repeating that behavior, I documented that, I took it for a blessing, and I removed everything that she has been trying to do when it comes to blooming, blooms equals stress. I do not want to add a layer to the stress that she endured when I sawed her off the mount and removed 60% of her viable root system. Since then, I've also done a little bit of thrips prevention because we've been talking about thrips and dendrobiums, aurantiflameum, and you know, <laughs> I was kind of a little bit alarmed that it might happen again. And I used garlic alcohol and I used systemic pesticide alternating and dendrobiums just hate anything, anything. Did I say systemic? I mean a soapy wash. Anything that they don't like when it comes to something industrial, they will dump their leaves, and that is what has happened here. Now, without foliage, there is not much photosynthesizing going on. Even the little new growth down here is affected. Thankfully, the orchid doesn't have any pests, but she soon won't have any leaves either. This orchid is, in my opinion, set back but I am watering her and flushing her, misting her several times a day. That is my care when it comes to mounts. I do not let these guys dry out for long. The longest time they are dry is while I'm getting my rest, but the first thing I do in the morning before even adding a tad of fertilizer is RO water spray can mist. That's what happens with both of them. This here is my Ceratolabium, had exactly the same treatment, got sawn off, has its own mount. I'm happy that I got the job done. Of course, I'm a bit disappointed, but it's to be expected when you do an intervention with an orchid that radical that there will be setback. The loss of a root system is exponential. Moving forward though, I'll be watching the canes and they shouldn't desiccate too much. She hasn't lost many leaves, but she normally starts to push buds end of July and blooms for about two weeks in August. 
It's going to be interesting to see if she's going to do that for us this year. If she does, I'm going to nip it in the bud. I'm not letting this orchid bloom because this is, in my opinion, a setback orchid. Because if she wanted to, she would be able to start a new growth. She's not doing that. So these orchids, in my opinion, while shock is a bit of a radical name, a radical description of what they're dealing with, it is better to think that they are in shock and then care accordingly, as opposed to 100% relying on the fact that, ah, they're dendrobiums, they're tough, they're fine, they'll pull through. While I miss the blooms, I know I did right by the orchid to remove another layer that could push her deeper into setback. Now, I did film this video very quickly back to back to part one, but I think that something like this, a topic this extensive, there shouldn't be that much of a gap in between the two videos. And for that reason, I don't have that many questions and doesn't mean that the dialogue can't continue. This is such an extensive subject. It is very difficult to cover in the best manner, which would be covering all bases, but all bases aren't the same because we don't all grow the same and we don't all have the same climate. So if you have any questions about an orchid that is specific to your climate that you're suspicious about i'm going to link a video in the description that is called need help or orchid details something along those lines if i cannot be precise with my answer in the comments then i'm going to ask you to fill out that form and we can go from there i think setback is a massive massive opportunity to learn about our orchids it is also pretty scary if you're not sure what you're looking at it is extremely disappointing if after years and years of babying an orchid and then it dies eventually anyway, you know, we can always say, well, why bother? It's set back, it's not gonna make it. Look at all the time I've spent, I should have been her sooner. While that is an option, absolutely, and I can say each to their own. When you get an orchid that comes through set back, and then after two or three years, you see the first blooms again and she is doing well. Oh, the satisfaction, I cannot tell you how good that feels. I know that experience from my Rapiculus Lelias. And I would love to have that experience once again with my Zagarik Wax African Beauty, but I think that video will have to wait until 2026 or 2027. So once again, if you are not subscribed, now would be a good time. <laughs> Meanwhile, from when my Zagarik wax was put into her rescue setup. We had one new root starting, that was my go-to signal. <laughs> that root has promptly stopped growing, but we have three more on the way that hopefully will make it. Anyway, from my Stan the Man and I, I thank you for your time if you've watched this video all the way to the end. Hope it was helpful. Thank you for your support. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.